What's up, YouTube? That's right, we got another piece of junk on the kitchen table. Another piece of audio junk. Well, it's not junk to me. It's a uh, Sony LBT D107 uh, remote controlled compact high fidelity stereo system. And as you can see, it's definitely seen better days. It was uh, not a high end receiver by any means to begin with when it was new. But I got this thing for free quite a few years ago and it's been pretty good. Um, it's not a bad little amp. It uh, has a good sound to it, decent output. It's uh, only rated at 15 watts per channel and 8 ohms but it's pretty strong for being 30 watts total it uh, really seems to have a good good kick to it with the right speakers I've uh, personally grown attached to this amp because it's been torture tested and held up just fine I've got the cover removed right now I'll go ahead and look inside of it and as you can see very crusty inside tons of junk don't know how well you can see it on camera I'm trying to be careful because this thing's plugged in right now but very crusty inside but overall the thing's held up the reason it's so crusty inside it actually sat on a porch for several years and was used outside with these speakers with the old rinky dink Sony speakers installed instead of the new replacements I got and the thing hasn't missed a beat it uh, still works fine um, I'm probably gonna have to make a part two to this video because it's night right now but now that I've taken the cover off I kinda wanna go out and clean the thing up and just give it a little bit of love I mean this thing wouldn't fetch five dollars at a yard sale but for what it is it works pretty good although the one major thing I found wrong with it which I've never even fooled with before I may have and just forgotten about it is that uh, the tape deck section is completely dead as you can see it's got a tape in there that came with a machine way back when Greg Allman band but Unfortunately, I can't listen to it because no tape deck functionality on either side other than the stop and eject buttons, which are just simple mechanical levers. But I think the reason why, when I got to inspecting this amp, let me go ahead and uh, shut it off and disconnect it from the wall just to be safe. But I don't know how easy it is to see. We'll try and zoom in a little bit. But that capacitor there, it's on the board that controls the tape deck and everything in that section. That capacitor is a little bit bulged out on top and I'm guessing that that's probably something to do with the fact that this tape section is just completely dead, does nothing. And there's one other capacitor and I did notice it seems a little bold. It's actually one of the main filter caps on the main board. The bottom one on camera. It appears to be slightly bulged out, but performance wise, other than the lack of tape functionality, which I'm not a cassette person anyways, it works great. Um, hooked up to another source. Right now I've got it hooked up to the computer. I'll uh, take it around and show you the connections on the back. It's pretty limited. It's a basic receiver. Just got phono inputs, CD, and a video input. No kind of RCA outputs whatsoever. And a pair of speaker jacks left and right. Just the kind of rinky dink, cheap kind. I don't like those all that much. I prefer the some kind of binding post or something that can accept a banana plug but those get the job done and luckily I haven't broken off yet and up here we have the antenna connections and 
right here I've just got it hooked to a simple piece of wire and it really only picks up one or two AM stations but uh, we'll go ahead and turn it on and play a little music with it oh, probably need to plug it in first one thing about this unit is it does not always seem to go to the correct mode when it starts up sometimes it'll remember plugged or unplugged I think it has a battery in there somewhere but sometimes it'll start on the tuner sometimes it'll remember the setting you were on like CD or tape and start up in that mode so not sure what that's about just a quirk of this old machine I guess it, the date stamps on it all appear to be early 92 the dates on the capacitor and whatnot so early 1992 and like I said this thing was on the lower end when it was built but enough talking let's just take a little listen the music I'm gonna use is that same uh, no copyright sounds on YouTube I'll put a link in the description But it really sounds good and strong, especially considering the limited power output that it's rated at. And as you can see from the internals, it's not super overbuilt by any means. That's the main board with the amplifier on it right there. And small heat sink. Zoom in. It's kind of hard to get a view safely with this thing running without zooming in. But... <laughs> very very neglected as you can see but it gets the job done and free is always the right price in my book and I guess I've just kept it around for so long because it just keeps on working and it hasn't let me down and one more thing about the controls it does have a remote controller as the name would suggest but I never had it it's been lost I'm sure for a very long time but this unit does have a built-in five band equalizer which is better than nothing uh, it is nice to give the speakers a little bit more punch this amp doesn't seem quite as punchy as the Kenwood receiver bass controls engaged or not the Kenwood just seems to have a little bit fuller sound now that's all subjective and it's by no means scientific, but just from my personally having them both hooked up, it does seem a little bit punchier with a Kenwood, but this thing does have a very nice sound. The noise floor on this, probably due to the low power rating, the fact that the gain factor of this is not huge, but the noise floor is virtually non-existent on this amplifier. And don't ask me how I know this, but it is stable it will stay on and run and play at three ohms per channel stereo it will put off a lot of heat and probably not live very long like that but I have tried it and it does work 
it does have a few other controls on here it has a surround control which I'm not sure what that actually does as far as the frequency or what it's actually shifting it seems like when you engage it all the way the highs become a little bit boosted but not really sure the DB FB I had to look that up I always knew it was some kind of a uh, bass control or loudness control and that's what it basically is it uh is a fancy name dynamic bass feedback or something to that extent from Sony and is basically a, a loudness control that attenuate or that boosts 50 Hertz or somewhere in that range and decreases the boost as the volume level goes up and of course a uh, balance left and right control and here's the controls for the tape section if it uh, did work it has uh, two types of tape you can select dubbing speed Dolby noise reduction it's Dolby B but none of that works so I can't test the one cassette that I still have after these all these years but listening to just general music off YouTube for this thing it still sounds great Probably time to give it a rest before the cops come knocking. Till next time.